this is a relatively small shed so therefore I don't have to worry about base being really hefty so what I've got here as you can see it's a small pieces of cuts now I've used uh, I've one for this this is glossed it has been glossed so it has white um, oil based gloss it's really good for uh, waterproofing purposes um, I was going to use those slabs but those slabs are pretty much the same uh, uh, same same thickness as these ones and therefore I thought you know what I might go for this and this will this will uh, also reduce the f amount of uh, um, water uh, blockage as a result of it as it's flowing down this way so it makes sense to go with smaller pieces uh, and these ones I've just cut them fresh and all I've done is just applied water-based polyurethane and um, just let that let that cure takes about an hour or so and then it's good to go um I, i'm probably going to screw them on from this from the top again you're probably thinking okay well that kind of defeats the objective of it being waterproofed uh no it doesn't actually i mean yeah of course water will still sip through the screws or the you know the, the gap that's created uh by the screws but it's still better than nothing and it's just additional much needed additional um, barrier uh, the this is the back end of the base I've decided to apply a polyurethane as well uh, why not I've also gone around the edges the cut edges and uh, applied um, same thing varnish right well not varnish it's a I think it's this oh it is a oh, flow varnish so this is a durable waterproof hard wearing floor varnish dries in two hours not even that in an hour actually especially uh, outdoor so um no it is varnish waterproof varnish applied and yeah that's it um once that's dried it's good to go uh, much like i said you'll add much needed uh, waterproofing uh, barrier <laughs> using cut osbs just bear in mind uh whether cut has taken place that is porous that's not waterproof and that was susceptible that, that's if he's exposed to the element especially rain it will penetrate the water will penetrate the OSB board okay like it has here I left it overnight uh, even though I treated it slightly but it didn't the, the cure the, the polyurethane didn't have enough time to uh, bond and as a result uh, water was able to get in between the chips and so it's slightly caused um bubble and and kind of spongy here and there so clearly um definitely seal it use polyurethane varnish or even stain whatever you can but um the surface itself seems to have a far greater waterproofing uh, barrier so even then i'm still going to uh, preserve it with uh, with whatever i got why not but definitely a huge tip the edges cut edges seal them okay whatever you do uh, otherwise your board will get ruined big time i've doubled up the flooring only because uh, the 11 millimeter thickness of the osb board they weren't strong enough and so Right now, there's double that, so it's 22 uh, millimeter. Now that is that looks solid. I can walk on it, no problem, you know, uh, without feeling like oh, it's gonna fall apart. And it holds quite steady. So yeah, that's really positive. It's worth um, it's worth doubling it up actually. That's ready now. I slap her on. What I'm going to do? Go between the grooves while the joins gaps here use a sealant waterproof sealant uh, just for the sake of it uh, same on the other end uh, underneath same over there all the way around all the way just go around with the um, glue waterproof gun and just seal that I might even seal the top on the bottom using just glue instead of screws why not save them I might use a few odd screws here and there and the other thing is um, 
the cut cut edges I'm gonna go around sealing all these using varnish waterproof based varnish that I have that should penetrate deep within I'm gonna do that now before it gets uh, but before the rain catches up with me so that's it once that's done this frame's gonna go on it and then the rest should just fall into places actually before I do that I'm gonna cloud that side first because I won't be able to get I won't get access to that side once it's done there so it makes sense for me to do that and then the rest I can just do from sides and wherever whatever else that piece there is sitting on top of the base uh, this this piece and the one further back over there drying that's gonna go behind here just behind there and then once that goes on I'm going to shimmy the whole unit the whole unit towards the wall close but not too close okay I'm probably gonna leave about this much gap which is probably about six inches uh, all right and then I'm going to apply varnish all the way around and maybe even the surface why not um, you know more you add the better it is it's not gonna kill you really so it's worth it I'm gonna do that I'm gonna pop into screw fix now just to get some uh, braces actually metal braces to go on the legs and that will clip hopefully I'll use them to clip the um, these beams onto the whatever you know and then we're done so good to go then I'll chuck the roof panel on and then well that's pretty much a big job done in itself so I might be able to get it done tonight apart from the door um, I'll do something about the door but I got the panel cut out anyway I'm just I just got sort some just gotta do something to it I'm not sure what I gotta do but I gotta do something to it I'm using these L shaped brackets um, just to reinforce strength and connection between the post and the base uh, also I've gone around the edges this side here I should screw in a few uh, screws one there and one here again all these will add much needed uh, strength so all the way across to to each and then on the other sides reinforced with long screws um, that go in an angle and catch onto the base here the base joist actually so um, you might wonder what I'm doing here so I'm going to screw on the first board which is this board here now because I'm doing it on my own it's a large board to deal with from my experience of uh, doing the kitchen ceiling plasterboard in the kitchen ceiling has taught me always use support system whatever that might be or you know anchor points and so on so I got one here the right uh, measured according to my board and one over there hopefully in theory this will enable me to rest my rest that piece on these screws and then I should be able to start screwing on a couple enough to sort of uh, carry the weight uh, well actually re uh, relieve these screws of uh, carrying the full weight of it so that's what I'm going to do and then hopefully that'll work once that works the next piece I'll just gonna I'm just going to slot from bottom uh, bottom down the reason why I'm working from top to bottom or well, the in theory makes sense to do it from bottom to top is because um, that piece there can't see that piece I'm not sure how far down it will go so by working down this way I can control and it's a much bigger piece as well um, I can control um, you know uh, just work comfortably basically so to control the comfort of my work here that's the main reason why I'm doing it change your plan um, I, I removed the screw from there purely because I, yeah, I said you know what no 
work from bottom up. What I've done is I've calculated uh, the height. The total height is 208. And as a result, this is where 208 stops. So therefore, uh, I was going to insert, but like I did earlier on, but I decided to go down this route um, just just rest the big piece, big old speed board onto these, and then I can just uh, continue my work. So, and thereafter, I should be able to place this piece here, as you can see, on top of the top of that one, and off I go. Continue with my work. That should work. Uh, when you're working out alone with large pieces, you really got to devise strategies and techniques to help you do what you got to do uh, to get the job done on your own and this is it we're going to what you're about to see me do there uh, i managed to pick this up from another youtuber um, i think he's a professional carpenter or whatever but i, I, I can't remember his um, youtube link and I'd, I'd, I'd mention it um I, basically i'm taking supplying glue between the two boards only because this will one add additional waterproofing barrier and on top of that uh, this will enable the two pieces to bind together much better it also closes porous openings here on this board or well, both the boards um, now I'm having trouble sticking this glue on that's because I've applied stain all over it and as you know stain and glue they don't go together because stain is meant to be waterproofing uh, agent because it's a waterproofing agent itself it's not going to stick very well which is good and bad at the same time but that's okay Against all odds, I decided to add a nugging only because that section, the middle section was sagging and so to prevent having to work on the roof in the future, I thought, you know what, might as well add a nugging now and that will keep the roof steady and going forward I should be fine. Just added a few more supports there and so on. One thing I learned, and I'm glad I did this now, having the peak and the trough in in slight angle, I'm not sure what degree, but at slight angle, it would have made life miles better, miles easier, and it would have, the roof would have uh, had a perfect slope, but it kind of doesn't. I'm not sure if you can note, see that. On the video it's slightly a little bit of wave um, not sure if that's gonna be a big problem because overall there is a slope as you can see but uh, we'll see time will tell um, I think I need to work on my angles a li little bit more um, yeah I'm gonna do some research and, and go forward from there especially for the man cave just over there for the man cave I gotta get the angles right can't mess around I measured my felt, um, I need 200, 200 and plus I had to take into consideration uh, the overhang so that's about 7 centimeters either way, uh, or both ways actually, so that's 14, so 214 is what my measurement is and that's over there. Uh, when you cut your felt you should definitely leave it flat. As for the cut, uh, what I did is took my measurement from one end uh, to 
214 and then from the other end to here just a dot and then just use a straight line using a Stanley knife cut it through cut it across obviously make sure something underneath that when you're cutting like the excess plywood that I'm using here uh, I was gonna use those hook like blade for the Stanley knife I have one but I realized this will work better and it, it does work better so I'm gonna stick to that method and it works the reason why I left this piece here on a flat surface just to enable the felt to uh, level itself basically uh, so then when you offer it up to the roof it will sit flush and nicely without um, without like bend and curve and whatever basically and a fold and stuff like that so over here uh, these are off cut pieces uh, I need this to flatten uh, ASAP and so I've applied weight different whatever I could find and hopefully this will speed up the process of getting that flatten otherwise this is what it looks like um, can you see sort of fold there and stuff like that and then it doesn't quite stick so well so uh, for maximum adhesion you want to let it flatten okay so do that for waterproofing barrier I mean if this <coughs> liquid and, and substance provide a waterproofing barrier I'd use it yes but the point of the matter is does it do the job so far no that's just resting on top there's nothing I mean you know I can I can actually show you let's just go up there oh yeah by the way use a bigger brush definitely if you want to get a job done quicker uh, and if you want to reduce uh, <coughs> the effort in applying this then definitely uh, use a bigger brush so here is a okay let's let's see. so this is the felt right oh by the way first time nailing this they are hard uh, yeah nailing they are hard man see look it peels off see the difference it's literally peeling off so what i'm going to do uh this is my these these, these are my final cut measurements so i got excess i'm going to remove these okay <laughs> uh just leave it of leave it on a flat surface and then what i will do i'll cut out what i need for this nail it and then i'll, I'll do what they suggested which is then paint over this or paint whatever you know apply that solution over it and then i'll stick my stick this felt back on obviously i've nailed here but i probably put some sort of silicone or something anyway i'll deal with it so yeah this is it i thought this is an important bit to cover a kind of a review but this is where we are Right, the felt is soft enough, so you can actually press it in. Uh, first time nailing something like this, and it's quite tricky, but I'm getting the hang of it. So um, it's better to get a good swing on the hammer and straight. So all that's done. Sky's grey, might rain. Uh, I'm gonna have a go applying the adhesive, and then hopefully I'll get to roll on the uh, felt over it. So anyway, let's go and do that. Pressing is time. I'm hungry as well. Bleeding my neck. Uh, let's see what, we, what I can do. I realized I, I don't need the whole piece. I was gonna do the. I was going to overlap the entire roof. Uh, with the with the piece that you saw but I've decided not to do that uh, because it's a lot of work for me applying the the, the the liquid adhesive and because of that I thought you know what it doesn't matter I'm just gonna overlap by like um, like 12 inches okay that's plenty anyway and that'll still give me enough to uh, fold round the edges anyway like so I've done here okay just to tuck in the excess bit onto the bottom side of the board now what I've done here I've got clamps I've applied glue underneath the, and now I'm just letting I just applied clamps to enable it to stick better and perhaps quicker as well as for the top 
I just use offcuts just to just just rested them on top of the sheet. This will enable it to set faster and uh, remove any air pockets. You're supposed to go around with the with the roller, but I don't have that. So anyway, this will do. <coughs> and that liquid there, uh, the black stuff, that's probably dried. I mean, it probably has dried by now because you have to do this within its set time. Anyway, I'll reapply the liquid and then finish that off. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go around the edges on the bottom side uh, here and I will see if I can um, check a couple of screws or even a galvanized nail. The problem is whacking the galvanized nails against the gravity is going to be a bit of a mission. should be okay here because this is the maximum strength here and not so not so much over there uh, the roof panel you see that's just rest not that one that one it's just resting on that joist here there and then you got a, a nugget going across to support them to that and the mid section of the roof mid section needs support otherwise it will sag this is a very rudimentary basic form of roofing that's because I need this done ASAP Right, that's it really. Am I going to go around uh, uh, with galvanized nails over this? Well, I'll see how strong the bond is. If the bond is strong, then I'll leave it. Like so, excess bit sticking out. Again, I'll just fold it onto the bottom and pin it, nail it on or screw it on whatever. I do find screws are easier to work with. So yeah, I thought I'll give it an update. Now I worked out a speedier way, an effortless way of spreading the adhesive, okay, faster as well. And you do certainly cover more grounds that way. Basically, go around in a soil, pour in it in a soil or in a wave, wave like. I'll, I'll see if I can draw it for you. I can imagine this is the surface, and you want to pour your bostic or whatever. You might have a different brand liquid adhesive or it might even be uh, liquid rubber and it is thick and it's just, like you said earlier on um, it's a lot of work and I talk about elbow grease that's what I would say is the classic it's the epitome of elbow grease basically um, right so what I did um, instead of dipping uh, uh, the liquid dipping my brush into the liquid and then applying it like so dip and apply which is time consuming and more effort this is what I decided to do I kind of try to work with the grain but with this felt the grains are actually random they're not specific like this way or that way across and as a result it makes no difference actually it works out better if you're doing a circular motion with the brush with the circular motion you actually cover more and with ease and you don't feel it on your elbow as much so another thing I did we I went with the jug you see over there so I just went around with the jug and I started pouring liquid like this okay like so an area that I could cover at one go basically and then with my brush so imagine this is my brush you can hold it like this however you want but I found it easier to do it like this um, and just go across it go across it or like swirl 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 round whatever you know random whatever you want to do and by doing that that way especially and then like that I will I, I, I sped up the process by two folds chuck three folds in there okay by three folds i'd say near enough to three folds i managed to increase my productivity and that's not bad so it's a little hack i thought i'll share that with you so the black stuff we see is this is where the two pieces overlap now the bigger piece is down there that's the one i started with and this is the smaller piece the smaller piece overlaps the bigger piece because it's a sloped roof because it's a sloped roof so once the water lands here, it will roll down and roll on. 
so it makes sense to have this piece on top of the other one okay right now this is not pretty okay uh, the reason why I've done that what, what I've done over there is because my own stupidity I've learned from that what I've done so basically uh, I actually pierced the felt from underneath when I was screwing on a couple of uh, stuff screws from beneath and uh, like I said it pierced, uh, pierced through and so as a result I had to go over with uh, with uh, with this uh, formula and just apply all around it this will seal gaps and and prevent it from you know whatever okay so that's that uh, I I could have gone around and just nailed you know few there few here and everywhere I just thought I'll leave it I follow the instruction of the product and just let it cure by itself on hindsight I could do that I could go around with nail and a nail uh, you know throw some galvanized nails with flat head design for uh, felt and shed but on this case I'm gonna leave it because there's no need for it because I've done this you see trimming underneath that all the way across I'll show you in a bit when I get down and that will certainly hold it in place more than certainly uh, it's just to seal uh, the two pieces and uh, eliminate gaps in between and that's what's that over here this is an off-cut piece I used I didn't want to use the other piece like I said earlier on because what I plan to do uh, keep it on the in the, sh in the shed <laughs> uh, for future use I'm sure this will uh, need replacing any uh, sometime soon so with this one because it's a small piece I actually went around nailed it to the uh, roof base as you can see and also went around with the liquid and just uh, in a generously applied all around it I let that cure let that set that will then harden and hopefully will add to much needed waterproofing barrier and this will also eliminate gaps and whatnot and leaving it to work uh, like a one big piece so that's that's what it, that's what it's supposed to do in theory but like I said I'm gonna inspect this because my bedroom is right there so what that means right from there I can have a look at here anyway and see you know um, if, if this is loose or whatever then I can always uh, you know um, uh, go after my work and sort it out so roof is on it's good to go now so here we are this is what I mean by trimming uh, I had excess PVC well there's a pile over there so I thought why not use it okay so I went around and just uh, as you can see just screw them on this will one allow the felt to cure with the substance and obviously you know uh, pin it down well onto the roof uh, and it's waterproof as well because I um, be underneath the underneath that I applied a layer of uh, waterproof glue or silicon if you like sealant and and so yeah that that's gonna add a lot more to I need one more over there and for the back I'm going to put that on now and then I shall whoa hazardous I shall move this shed against the wall and then we're good to go for the next phase which is cladding